For years, we've been told, type 2 diabetes starts with obesity. As the science has expanded, it has become clear obesity and type 2 diabetes are associated with low-grade inflammation. So, what causes this inflammation? Well, one theory is unhappy fat cells. Now, unhappy fat cells can be cry babies, but there are people who are morbidly obese with contented fat cells and normal weight individuals who are on fire. So, fat cells aren't responsible for all this inflammation, which leaves unhappy gut cells, specifically the cells that line the gut, as another potential source of this inflammation. <laughs> okay, okay, unhappy might not be the right word. The problem is when the gut becomes leaky. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we discover the role of housekeeping in protecting from type 2 diabetes. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the gut is an interesting place. If you think of your body as a donut, the gut is the hole in the middle. It's outside and inside at the same time. Now, the cells lining the hole, the enterocytes, have their work cut out for them. These little guys have to keep the bad things out and let the good things in. Unfortunately for them, good and bad is not black and white and getting things in is not just simply a case of opening up the gate. Things have to be processed and processing depends on exactly what has arrived and who is available and in every bite there's good, bad and ugly. Now to be fair it's a team effort. The gut cells get a lot of help and support from the immune system and some of the bacterial residents. Some, not all. And remember, there are a trillion or so bacteria jostling for a bite to eat and a place to sleep. Now, the majority are good neighbors, doing their bit to help process the food. But there are always rough characters and any time you have a crowd wastes accumulate one particularly troublesome bacterial waste product is lipopolysaccharide better known as lps now it's not something bacteria produce deliberately but when bacteria that belong to the gram-negative clan roll up their sleeves and get busy, they leave LPS behind. Now, when this LPS is not picked up timelessly, inflammation can happen. The reason? The LPS doesn't sit tight. It can slip past the layers of cells lining the gut and get inside. Once in the blood vessels, the immune system goes crazy. They're thinking invasion, etc. So the presence of LPS causes 
inflammation. Now, this problem of metabolic endotoxemia is one of many metabolic problems associated with metabolic syndrome. The question is, could this be the problem? Well, this is supposed to happen. Intestinal alkaline phosphatase, or IAP, should sweep through the gut and clean up. IAP is a pretty tough enzyme. It persists all the way down the GI tract. All the way down. It appears in the poop. A researcher from MH Samarita Medical College in Dakar set out to quantify how on the ball the IAP cleanup crew was in type 2 diabetics. So poop samples were collected from Bangladeshi residents with the help of a team of local doctors. The patients were all between the ages of 30 and 70 years. 202 people were diabetic. These people either had fasting blood glucose levels higher than 7 millimolar or they were taking diabetes meds. The control was 445 healthy people. The IAP poop data was correlated with metabolic health. In people who had type 2 diabetes, the cleanup crew was short-staffed. On average, people with type 2 diabetes had 50% less IAP in their poop. So what? Isn't it just another thing that's gone awry in type 2 diabetes? Well, this patient population was not the typical patient population studied in the West. There was little to no obesity. In fact, the average weight of the healthy people was 59.3 kilograms, while the diabetics weighed in at 59.6 kilograms. In fact, only their total cholesterol levels, LDL cholesterol, and fasting glucose levels were significantly different with a big difference coming in fasting sugar levels. Healthy people had a fasting blood glucose of 4.4 millimolar, while the diabetic patients had a fasting blood glucose of 8.2 millimolar. So, to all intents and purposes, the diabetics were normal, except for the fact that the cleanup crew was short-staffed. When the numbers were crunched, it was found for every 25 units per gram decrease in stool IAP, there was a 35% increased risk of diabetes. Is IAP the straw that breaks the camel's back? Could be. At this stage, we don't know why the IAP level is lower, but having more seems to push the odds in your favor. And who doesn't want the odds tipped in their favor? Especially when you realize IAP levels are responsive to what you eat. A quick list of some of the nutrients known to stimulate IAP release, calcium, vitamin K1 and K2, saturated fat, several spices, and omega-3. Hmm, <laughs> it kind of makes sense to pay your IAP enzyme a performance bonus so you can create better body chemistry. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry? or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library, or get a little help with your body chemistry by signing up for a body audit. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype.
know someone who is diabetic or pre-diabetic, share this video with them. So they know how important it is to have this enzyme servicing their gut. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.